Golbanites. Here we are. Hopefully, um, next time I do this, we can be sitting face to face. So, our Bible lesson this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, and we're looking at the life of Jesus. And we find ourselves in the last months of Jesus' ministry. So, it doesn't really matter where we go. We can go backwards and forwards, as I said that last time. Uh, we will learn so much just by looking at the life of Christ himself. So I have a, let's get ourselves in context. I have a map here, like so. Dead Sea, Sea of Galilee, and we've uh, Jerusalem. And from here, right up to there is about from Goldman to Bargo. It's a very, very small country. And for those that want some current politics, and this will be much better when I can actually use that whiteboard that you have. Uh, some politics, the, what the, what's called the West Bank is this area, maybe from there, right, right down here, Just a point on Jerusalem because they've got that mosque in the middle of the town down halfway through the Dead Sea across and then right up the Jordan River. So that, that area there, it's quite a large area. And the Palestinians also have a little strip just down here called the Gaza Strip. So that's the Gaza Strip. I'm doing this in reverse so it's interesting. So this area here would be what is called the West Bank, the old Samaria. All the rest uh, belongs, belongs to Israel. Uh, this, this, this area over here is actually Jordan. So Israel is such a tiny country, has so much importance. So anyway, we find Jesus down here in the Judean hills, just here. Bethlehem's down here, Bethany, etc. It's all down here, he's been to Perea, He's come down. Uh, if you turn in your Bibles, so hopefully you've got those. If you turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 9, verse 51, it says, And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up, he said steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messages before his face, and they went and entered into the village of the Samaritans to make ready. So here's Jesus steadfastly setting his face to go to Jerusalem uh, because the time is come for him to be received up. Now, we believe this is around about this time or closer to Christmas. Um, he's in, he's already had three years of ministry and he's in his fourth year and there's only months to go before um, he gives his life on the cross. So his ministry has changed. He's taught for three years and his ministry has changed. He's now starting to warn people about judgment to come. And he's attracting massive crowds because of the miracles and so forth. And in those crowds, uh, we have, of course, the Pharisees, the scribes, the lawyers, um, all sorts of people. Uh, some people are keen, some people are like all crowds just there for the show, uh, the interaction between him and the, uh, the religious leaders. And... He has just come from a Pharisee's house where he's pronounced several woes on them. And we get the context of what's happening when we uh, look at the, the, the last verses in chapter 11. He says this in verse 52. Woe unto you, lawyers, for you have taken away uh, the key of knowledge. That's a profound verse, really. You have taken away the key of knowledge. In other words... You're, you're looking at the truths in Scripture and you're hiding them. You're, you're replacing the truth of Scripture with your own religious system. You've virtually locked up the truth and thrown away the key. And that's what all hypocritical, false religion does. A typical example would be the Roman Catholic Church. So many people thinking they were actually worshipping God when they're really not because the truth has been hidden from them. 
you know, um, cast your mind back to Martin Luther. He grew up in that system and the truth was hidden from him. Eventually, when he started studying the scripture for himself, uh, the truth was revealed and, the, and the, uh, the key to knowledge was unlocked. But hypocrit hypocritical religion will always hide the truth of scripture that the Holy Spirit illumines. So he says, woe to you lawyers for you have taken away the key of knowledge and and the worst thing is you, you're not entered into eternal life yourself and you're hindering others from uh, entering into eternal life. Uh, I know so many people that have been uh, converted from hypocritical uh, Catholicism mainly um, where, where the truth was hidden from them and then when the truth was revealed through plain teaching of the Bible, they responded and entered into the kingdom. And he says, he that said these things, unto, and as he said these things, verse 53, unto them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to urge him vehemently and to provoke him to speak of many things. So um, a little bit like blowflies, Pharisees and scribes were just hanging around and they were a nuisance. They had no intention of being anything but a nuisance. They're trying to get him to speak. And the more he can speak, uh, the more they have to latch on to and uh, try and trick, trip him up to turn the people. All they want to do is kill him now uh, because he's a threat to their entire existence. There's nothing worse than hypocritical religion. It's worse than just a straight murderer. You think of Ivan Milat uh, compared to uh popery and cardinals and all that type of thing ivan malat uh in a sense would be in a better place than hypocritical religion it's damn it's a damning thing uh woe to you scribes and pharisees verse 54 says they were lying in wait for him seeking to catch something out of his mouth that they might accuse him how bad's that Chapter 12 now, and we get the setting of where we are. So we're down here, just below Jerusalem, and it says in verse 1, In the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, in other words, thousands of people, a massive crowd of people, inasmuch that they trod upon one another, they were treading on each other, he began to say to his disciples, first of all, First thing, so he's got this massive crowd, he's got hypocrites in there, he's got um, hangers on, and he's at the stage now where he's not going to, my spirit, uh, Genesis 6, my spirit will not always strive with man. He will not cast pearls before swine. So here he is at this stage, and first of all, it says, he speaks to his disciples. Now, disciple is just the word methetase. In the Greek, it just means a learner. Uh, now, when we say disciples in this sense, he's not meaning the 12 disciples. As such, he's talking about those in the crowd that were trying to learn from him. Those in the crowd that were either in the kingdom, trying to get into the kingdom, or perhaps would never get into kingdom at all but they were listening intently to him so he turns to these type of people learners followers disciples they were not against him in other words whereas the pharisees and scribes and the, the mainstream crowd were against him so here's a group that's not against him they're trying to learn they're trying to de decide and he says to these people much like a almost a typical church these days, um, he says to these people, first of all, and we said this last time when I was with you, beware the, uh, the leaven of the scribes and the Pharisees, for it is hypocrisy. So uh, beware, uh, keep a lookout for uh, warning, danger. What? The permeating influence of false religion is devastating. For a learner. 
it's not it's not a neutral thing just because a person uh, believes in God or goes to church or something as I said before hypocritical religion hypoc the word hip hypocrisy co um, it comes from the root meaning of actor and actor all hypocritical religious teaching is a, is an act and the act is this we offer to you eternal life in a way of getting into the kingdom but they don't really it's just an act they can't offer that it's just an act it's not real this is the way to view the bible but it's just an act it's not real um so he says you be, you beware the permeating influence the the fact that false religion is not benign it's not peaceful it's not having the best intentions it is a permeating evil influence on the kingdom of god and it's more dangerous than straight out atheism so he says beware the leaven of the pharisees for it is an act it is hypocrisy it it does not deliver what it purports to deliver and it's seeking to swallow up learners people seeking verse 2 and then he gives these three reasons really why it it's it's so bad because it does not honor God. False religion does not honor God and honoring God is what truth and the truth of knowledge is all about. I give these repeated talks in Proverbs and the whole book of Proverbs is predicated upon the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. And wisdom is the way into the kingdom of God. Predicated upon the fear of the Lord, honouring God, being in awe of God. Uh, hypocritical religion is not in awe of God. It finds another way. And these are, there's three reasons why these disciples that he's talking to, first of all, in the crowd, and this is a long sermon, every now and then someone will ask him a question, but Jesus is now, now proclaiming warnings. He's proclaiming judgment on on the, anyone that will listen and here these group of disciples learners some saved some trying to get into the kingdom by understanding more truth and he doesn't make it easy for them he makes it hard but he gives them these three three distinct obligations and warnings for anyone uh, that really 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 wants to honor god which false religion does not do and he says, first of all, uh, we, we touched on this last time, but I'm sure you've forgotten. Uh, there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed. There's nothing here that, that shall not be known. In other words, um, all the deception that you see carried about by false religion, all the deceiving, all the covering, all the layers that is put over the truth, it will all be revealed. It will all be uncovered. In other words, when you think about God, don't think that God doesn't know what's going on. He does. And don't think that hypocrisy and false religion will not be held to account. I told a man the other day that I believe um, everyone will be held to account. He was quite shocked um, with their judgment because he had this benign view, uh, view of human beings. I, I spoke to another lady, um, United Church lady some spiritual truths about the bible and she just has this big blank look on her because she's had these layers of um where of lies really put over year after year month after month and throughout her life so that now when she comes to the bible she sees it through the view of hypocritical religion and rather than let it the holy spirit just reveal its truth she's blinded so Jesus is warning, he's saying, don't you think that anything um, that has been said in a, in a 
uh, in the darkness won't be broadcast in the light. Don't you think that anything that has been whispered in some inner room, a conversation in an inner room, won't be shouted upon the rooftops? It will. And that's a huge reason why you should honour God, because he knows everything and every single thing will be uncovered and revealed. Secondly, um, the reality of hell, punishment in hell, all hypocritical uh, religious teaching. It's fascinating to me that most of the cults don't believe in the doctrine of hell. And I find that in the church as well now. It's, um, there's, it's sort of swept under the carpet. Well, let's just look at this. Verse 3. Therefore, say unto you my friends and so these people he's talking to firstly in verse 1 he says there he says first of all to his disciples now in verse 4 he says I say unto you my friends and if we go in my Bible over the page to verse 32 he says fear not little flock for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom so firstly disciples my friends my little flock so thousands and thousands of people in front of jesus thousands of people and he's talking to this little group that wants to learn he calls them friends he calls them a little flock amongst a big crowd so typical of true believers, the remnant. And he says unto you, don't forget all this hypocrisy that you can see around you, the scribes, the Pharisees, it will permeate. Don't forget that that will all be uncovered. Anything said in darkness, shout it on the rooftop. And secondly, secondly, I want you to work out who you are going to fear if you fear them and their influence in your whole social structure your whole uh, level of existence if you if 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 you're going to escape the clutches of hypocritical religion you are going to have to fear god and here's the reason why and in doing that you will honor god Fear God means to honour God, be in awe of God, uh, the fear of displeasing God. That's what it means. And he says, here's the reason, because there is a reality and that reality is hell. And all hypocritical religious people will be winding up in eternal punishment in hell. And he says, verse 4, we have the don't fear, the do fear, the don't fear, the do fear. And I say unto you, my friends, do not. Be afraid of them that kill the body, but after that, there's nothing more that they can do. <clears throat> but I forewarn you. So here he is, and this is what we're talking about here. We're talking about a series of warnings. Yes, he will invite people into the kingdom. Yes, he will give uh, uh, words of hope and blessing, but primarily he is warning, and he's warning this little flock, these disciples, these friends. He's warning, look, uh, don't you fear these people? Fear God. You have an obligation to fear God. Because these people, all they can do is kill your body. But after that, nothing. But God, and some people say, oh, this is Satan. It can't be Satan. Satan's the one going into hell too. To, to be destroyed. It's not Satan at all. It's God. God is the most fearful being in, in the universe. Why? Because if you have two people, uh, you have a Pharisee, a scribe, a religious, you have mankind in general, all authority of mankind, and on this end you have God. This person here, they both can kill your body. But this one here, God, can destroy your soul in eternal hell. So which one you want to fear? This one, this one, and he creates this contrast. 
between what this one can do and this one can do. And for those that, um, and there's plenty of so-called Christians don't believe in hell, they'd say, oh, it's just a grave. If it was just a grave, well, this one will put you in the grave, this one will put you in the grave. There's no contrast. So he's setting up a contrast between what this one can do and this one. They both can kill the body, but this one, by contrast, can destroy the soul in hell, eternal hell. And the word for hell there is Gehenna. Gehenna was, <clears throat> um, it's a funny word, it was uh, it was a word for the Valley of Hinnom, which was outside Jerusalem, where there was a continual burning of rubbish and it, was, it never went out. There was all the rubbish was burnt there and that became a, a synonym or a, a metaphor for what the term uh, eternal hell represented. So this eternal burning flame of hell. Fear God who is able to do that. <clears throat> okay. Verse 5. Oh, verse 6 now. now um, I love this because uh, this is all about the omniscience of God. Omniscience of God means God knows everything. And the best way to say that is in the negative. And that is, there is, I hope you're not looking at this dog. The best way to say that is in the negative. And like this, it, it has more impact. There's nothing that God doesn't know. So three obligations to honour the Father. Number one, he knows everything. Everything that's said, everything uh, covered will be unveiled. I often think, just as an old ex-cop, every... Every morning people would come into the police station and you'd have a, or you'd go to work in the police station in the morning and all these crimes done in the night. And it's um, fascinating to me that as a culture starts to lose its respect for God and its knowledge of God, that God knows everything and sees everything, uh, crime rates will rise because people do things in the dark and they think they won't be seen. Uh, so the more spiritual a country becomes in the Western world, the less crime you will have. <clears throat> so watch out, Western world, because we're becoming very godless. Okay, so he says, God knows everything intrinsically. And he gives two examples, the sparrows and the hairs on, on your head. Where's my drawing? So to avoid, in context again, to avoid hypocritical religion, it's going to permeate, it, it, it will hide the truth. And what it hides is the fact that God doesn't know everything, um, but he does. And here's a reason for you to honour God. Here's a reason. Not only has he the ability to cast into hell, whereas the other doesn't. Not only uh, will things be shouted on rooftops, that are tr tried to be kept hidden. But look, you pick up a humble little sparrow. There's five sparrows there, and there's two farthings. Now, a farthing is maybe half a cent. So one of these sparrows dies, and he'd be worth, what, a quarter of a cent? We don't even have a cent. We don't even have two cents now. A quarter of a cent, one of those little sparrows dies, your father knows. The eyes of the Lord, Psalm 34, are upon the righteous and his ears unto their supplication. Don't you think? God doesn't know. He knows everything. Here's a man's hairs on his head. But the very hairs of your head are numbered or all numbered. Imagine we're all teenagers where we've got all our hair. And I looked up on Google how many hairs in an average size head, average head. 100,000 hairs in each person's head. I know people go bald, but imagine we're all teenagers. 100,000 hairs. Does God sit down and count them? No, he just knows it intrinsically. Why? Because he is God. Why? Because he is omniscient. He knows everything. 
So to these disciples, to his friends, to his little flock, he's saying, look, look, don't let false religion permeate you. Don't let it influence you. Fear God. Honour God. He knows every single thing about you. Down to the very hairs on your head. He knows when a... Don't you think if he knows when a quarter of a cent sparrow dies anywhere in the world, don't you think he knows all about you? And he does. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings and not one of them is forgotten by God? But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore. Fear not. You are of more value than many sparrows. So on one hand, you're to fear God because he is to cast into hell. And on the other hand, because you fear God, you are to fear not. This um, idea of um, death. Because God has prepared a place for you, eternal heaven. And then he says, if you fear, if you fear God and if you understand the fact that all these things that are hidden will be uncovered. All the hypocrites will be exposed. They all will. Uh, if you understand that God has the power to cast into hell, if you understand that uh, he knows every single thing about everything intrinsically without having to learn it, he just knows it. And you understand that even if a sparrow dies and he regards for them, he has regard for you. If you understand all that, then you will honour the Son. He who honours the Father honours the Son. And here we have uh, we have more next week, the Holy Spirit, the next time I'm with you. But here the Son now is brought in. And, he's, who's, and Jesus himself is speaking. He says, you're looking, the, you're looking at the person who if you confess me, and this this is the issue, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before the angels of God in heaven. And angels are used here because they're always the instruments of judgment, in particularly in the book of Revelation. So um, you, you, you want to be judged? You don't want to be judged. Who do you want to fear? Make your choice today. God or men? You fear God? you will confess him before men. And if ever there was a day when uh, we need to confess verbally in any way that we have the opportunity, the Lord Jesus Christ, to this secular nation of ours, it is today. If we do that, he will confess us before the angels which are in heaven. If we deny him, he will deny us before the angels which are in heaven. The choice is clear. These are all warnings now. The Lord has only got months to go and he is not going uh, to pussyfoot around with, with people. If you are a disciple, if you are a learner, if you are a follower, uh, if you are on that path, then you must confess the Lord Jesus Christ as your saviour and he will confess you before the angels which are in heaven. Until next time, this has been Wayne Davis from Mulwari Community Church.